Ghana Revenue Authority has so far hit 96.4% of its targets in revenue collections for this year. In 2017, revenue collection targets was pegged at 34 billion CDs, which was described as a daunting tax by experts. Today on AM Business, the Acting Director General of the Ghana Revenue Authority, Emmanuel Kofimti, shares plans to widen the tax net and its potential revenue target for 2018 in the upcoming budgets. As of September, we have blew the target by 3.6%. So that we are done about 96.4 percent of the target. We are aiming to still do our best to achieve the target. It was a very, very big challenge target. And the messages out there that if you achieve, some people say, then the World Bank said, you bring and just come and learn from us. But so that was the extent of the target. And so it was such a huge challenge thing. And We've done over 96 percent of it. it. Means I've done a lot. And so the last year it goes. The, the October numbers we are not piecing them together. I may know the, the trend, trend by the end of the week. But then we were on an upward trajectory, moving closer and closer to the target. So at the point in time by June we are like negative 5.2. And then we started coming down, then we got into negative 3.6 as of September. Our first to GDP ratio is hovering around 16.5%. But even the sub Sahara sub region, we are looking at a figure of above 20%. And for uh, lower middle income countries, about 22%. And for us, we want to move towards that. So we are targeting increasing our tax to GDP ratio, 1% increase a year for the next four years. So that by the time of the fourth year, we would have entered the 20% plus region. But it is happening because um, we, we, we have the percentage of people we are paying tax being on the low level, the low level as compared to others. And one can say maybe it's coming from where we are coming from. Previously as a nation, uh, I mean, the cocoa sector was the driving force to driving the nation's agenda and backed by the good receipts. So that the cocoa farmers were basically the revenue from that sector was used in building the nation. And so the percentage of the cocoa that was paid farmers was on the low side. So that we have a nation where the nation literally was built from the cocoa sector. And going into the future, and somewhere along the line, there was this realization that the cocoa farmers and people of such sorts had been cheated enough. And it's like their destinies, their children, worst destinies had been mortgaged. <laughs> So we had to begin to look at mobilization. So the, the, we had this National Revenue Secretariat, which was formed in the early part of the 80s. <clears throat> and then out of it, we got the Internal Revenue Service and the rest come from. So domestic uh, resource mobilization, revenue mobilization, wasn't really, really a part of the agenda in the past. I mean, in the 70s, the 80s, and the 90s. I mean, and when we got to the latter part of the 80s and 90s, and then with the ERP coming in, the rest, then there was a need to begin to shift. So it's quite different from the historical perspective when you compare it to other countries. So for some other countries, from day one, there was this issue of revenue mobilization, the tax consciousness. And this is where we are. So we want to also move along those lines. Revenue, domestic revenue mobilization is central to driving the government agenda. And most of the time we are moved into a lower middle income countries. And so once you move into a lower middle income countries, the dependency on it begins to be that out. 
and they, they, I mean, the ability to stand on your own to drive your own agenda and, and your activities become paramount. And so that is the way we want to go. So that if we are intensifying revenue mobilization domestically, it is the way to go. Once we start a process of being able to build a database of taxpayers, say that when I key in your name, your name, Sheila Tamakuru, if I key in your name, Sheila Tamakuru, you should come out of the database and be able to tell me, uh, Miss Sheila Tamakuru, in 2014, you paid 100 Ghana. In 2015, you paid 300 Ghana. In 2016, you paid 600 Ghana. Then in 2017, you paid 320 Ghana. When I read that the fact that you moved from 100 to 300 to 600, and all of a sudden to 720, I would say maybe you are hitting your plateau, you are plateauing off. I will try to understand. I will go. So that we as tax administration will be able to know the taxpayer. What we want to do, that we want to know the taxpayer and the things that concerns him and his needs and to address them. Whilst doing that, they address the nation's uh, national resource mobilization support going forward. The national task campaign are basically about two things. One, to allow for national discussion on tax issues. So that as a nation, then tax has not been issues which we discuss. For the first time, we want discussions on tax issues to be on the front pages of the papers and in the, on the radio for it to be discussed. And secondly, to allow for voluntary compliance. And if we are getting a very compliant society, the tax work becomes a little easier, and so you are able to manage it. The big countries which have a high tax to GDP ratio is happening because their compliance levels are high. In the evaluation, we use the evaluation to test on the, the sensitization of the society before and after. And from it, we will be involving the ordinary stakeholders, the you and me. We will be involving the businesses. We will then use it to really guide. But then if within this phase, we are able to experience a 10% growth in the taxpayer base for this year, I would have said we've, um, for the next half year, we have made an input. We were, I mean, when you ask me, the real target proof for me, I'll be looking at something like between 15 and 20 percent. And if you're able to do that for the next two years, I mean, there will be a significant growth in the attached payer base. everybody who earns income to reach out to our offices and then while they reach out to our offices we will give them the tax payer identification numbers 10 numbers and that is the beginning of our uh, relationship with them so on their own they should make the effort to reach out to our offices and I like I've told you our taxpayer services to also be reaching out to the people the potential taxpayers so that is by that means we are able to document our taxpayers. Thank you. So any final message for um, Ghanaian South? Yes, we want to say we appreciate your effort so far. We are good. We can be better, but while well, it may have been the best. We want our taxpayers to link up with us. We are in nation building. 
the little that comes from you build, will build a nation. So please play your part. Help the nation support the future generation. coming budget, I believe there will be the consolidation of the ideas which have been expressed in the 2017 budget. And it's aimed, I mean, we will be taking of more efficiency dimensions of the tax. I know the, in this budget, I, I believe issue of the electronic point of sale introduction may feature into the budget. And so it may be there. And other moods that will help make the tax system very efficient and at the same time economical and having a system that's value for money center. But then we believe that a realistic target is what has to inform, be informed in the budget and not a very optimistic uh, numbers. The, definitely, definitely, if uh, uh, we may be looking at that, that definitely. But I, I just can't take what is the minister's right. So if we, I said we may be looking at something over 40 billion, but that's how I said we may be looking at something over 40 billion. But the actual number has to come from the minister.